Cali lifestyle, you ain't no uh, one six, uh, rep the rib, ho. Yeah, Cali yeah. from the seven six, so oh. oh. ride the whip, rev it like broom. Yeah. Batty open passenger door, yeah. take it yeah. to the telly room for. Said she on a 92 stop, yeah. rode me yeah. like a Chevy six, bro. Uh, Business meeting, penthouse uh, suite, uh, uh, need to keep the past the top uh, flow. And we are back. Man, what is going on? Dude, it's, it's so trippy, so folks. Once again, <laughs> welcome to the adventures of the Black Nerds. It, I'm Baron. I'm T. Jones, and we are trying a new medium. Um, normally, we're in the same vicinity, yeah. and to I don't know. I, I'm gonna like this. We're using Google Hangouts or Google Hangout Meet or whatever it's called, yeah, and some Google I product. Could, I could see you. I could still see your reactions. Yeah. You know, just via webcam, and yeah. uh, it's it's pretty it's different because I'm not right there. Like I can't tap you on the shoulder when you say something. Like hold on, let me let me get my point in because you know how angry you be getting. Yeah, I do but get riled up. It do it. It is. It's a. It. I mean, like you said earlier, we have this technology. Why don't we use it? So yeah, that's the whole thing. Because once again, folks, we wanna we wanna be able to give you a high quality experience. Um, and the more we know, the what is it? You, when you know better, you do better. Exactly. So if we can figure out a way to give you more content, um, we want to do it. And um, my daughter just walked in. That was funny. But um, it just, we want to offer a better experience. And I want to make sure this seems like a proper way we can do it. Yeah, I like it. I mean, we have it. Why not use it? So exactly. we're here to use it. Now, hey, man, it's a lot went down this week, dog. Yeah. A lot went down. Um, you were you were definitely holding it down. <laughs> I mean, I, I just think you say it all the time, and we say it all the time, uh, uh, that, that famous Martin Luther King's uh, quote. And uh, I just think when people act, when people – I don't. I don't understand where people's. All right. So explain what we're actually about to talk about because okay. you are headstrong in it. Okay. So, just... so basically, during the presidential honoring of the cold talk, the Navajo, uh, the Native American cold talkers who helped in World War One, World War Two, and just general information and create. I mean, I can go in. I can go for days about the history of the cold talkers. But long story short. They're a group of Native American individuals um, and they were being honored by the president. So let me paint the picture for you. Now, President Trump is doing a good thing by honoring these men. That's that's beautiful. That's what's supposed to happen. But where he falls short, as he often does, and it's always those social cues or those mishap moments that are ruin a beautiful thing. So where he fell short was he had he's given this presentation and honoring this men, these men in front of the president who is known as the Indian killer, Andrew Jackson. Mm -hmm. Now strike I'm not number one strike one. So that's, that's all this man trail of tears westward, uh, the manifest destiny. I'm not even going to, I mean the dude, I want to say he even told Congress with what army are you going to stop me? Like the man, he was known as the Indian killer. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not going to dive too much into that one, but so that's part that's strike one. And then strike two, where that stirred up all the uproar is he called Elizabeth Warren Pocahontas. <laughs> now, for for those listening who are not of the are not of the ethnic variety, um, you you don't you don't make references like that towards people it's not in any way shape or form a compliment donald trump did not use that term as a compliment to describe elizabeth warren now regardless of elizabeth warren lying about her or not having proof of her claim to be native that's not the point the point of it is he used this term pocahontas to make fun of her while honoring a group of Native American men who fought, died, and saved us, saved this country. 
and are becoming extinct. Yeah, they are. Com- yeah, I want to say there's very few left. I don't know the there's, exact numbers. I think he said it was 13 of them. I mean, you know, time always wins. Jesus. It, it's, but, it's. you know, with that, with all of that being said, and I said this to you when it was happening, as it was going on, like, yo, if you say something that is disrespectful and I tell you that, yo, I felt like you were disrespecting me, just eat that, man. My bad. I'm sorry. Why do you have, why do you want justifications of why you said, why, there, you don't need to explain it. You don't need to, to jump around the bush and try to make it seem you weren't being disrespectful or how is it not? I'm just telling you it's disrespectful. Ex- just relax. Exactly. No, that's honestly, I, I was fighting all day at, on Instagram or Instagram on Facebook and Twitter. I shouldn't have to explain to you why something is disrespectful to me. Now, I'm going to tell you this. How much respect you have for me is determined by how you respond to me telling you something is disrespectful. If me calling you four eyes. I mean, well, that's a bad example. Um, If me calling you. No, no, no. I don't want it to be outward name calling. If Mm -hmm. me knowing your Jamaican heritage. If me constantly calling you. You, uh, Hussein Bolt. If I always called you Hussein Bolt, I'm not saying it in a manner of I think you're fast. I think you're a great leader amongst your country. I think you're a great uh, role model for kids. I'm not saying it to you like that. I'm yeah. cracking a joke. Exactly. That's just exactly like what it is. Just like if somebody called me Kunta Kente, Chicken George, Buckwheat. I mean, Coon. I can Coon. You know, that's more of a straightforward. I'm trying to use terms that. Just play okay. If I went to work, if I went to my reservation, if I went to any reservation, if I went to a group of Native American women and I went around calling them Pocahontas, that is not funny. Mm-hmm. Just like if I went around a group of Native American men and I was calling them Tonto, our Lone Ranger's partner, yes, these are not bad, these are names of people or figures, but it's it's in the way I'm using it. Yeah. That's where the disrespect comes. And then plain and simple, you're cracking a joke. And it's an inappropriate one, especially for the time and place. And it's a racially charged joke that above all, my president of the the man who's president of the United States, my president of the US did the United States, he should not be using these type of jokes. He should that's, not in public. The, Jesus. That's the main point right there. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I heard somebody say the other day, uh about the when he said grab him by the pussy remember that line yeah i, I was watching a thing on uh youtube it's called cut and they have a, a beer pong series where they do like fear pong where okay. they, they get one of the things was they got like uh, uh they had a theme uh, they got a democrat versus a republican and they and every underneath each cup was like a dare so you had the option to do the dare or drink the cup well one lady said uh he, the dude asked her about the the grab him by the pussy line and she said uh yeah well he he's just human like the rest of us now we get that we understand that yes. he's the president of the united states you got to be held to a higher carrier. standard exactly if you're the president you're the face of the country you are the man that sits at the top when people think about america they think about you at that current moment because you're the you know the quote unquote leader of the free world you have to carry yourself a different way now regardless say he said it and he came out of, i would have so much more respect if he came out and was just like yo i'm sorry you know i didn't mean it that way that's different you just own it up to it but for people trying to justify it and people trying to take it to a level where it doesn't need to go i shouldn't have to explain to you why it's wrong just don't do it, it. Exa- and that's and that's the point and that's the big issue for me and what I saw in my my battle on the Internet with my Twitter yeah. fingers. Um, mm-hmm. What I seen on the battlefield, <laughs> that's what I'm going to call it. Um, <laughs> what I saw was that people were constantly trying to explain to me why it's not a bad term instead yeah. of listening to someone from that demographic who's telling you. It's not a good term. First off, the history behind Pocahontas is not a good one. Disney Channel fluffed that story to no end to a point to where it's even hard for me to go back and watch it because it's nowhere near what's true. They had to. 
Well, of course, because it was vulgar. Story, yeah, the real story, they couldn't tell kids that. They couldn't play that. Not not in a cartoon. It would be on Adult Swim. Exactly. Like, it, it just, plain and simple, if somebody from a specific demographic tells you that a term is not cool, if you have enough respect for that person, you listen to them and take their word for it. I'm not going to go and challenge you. I'm not going to challenge you. If I walk into your house and you tell me to take my shoes off, I'm going to take my shoes off. Why? Because I'm in your space. Yeah. If you, if our, let's, let's take, let's take it to this level. Me eating with your family. When we would, when I would eat at your house, everybody, you would share out food. Yeah. Everybody get, they share it out. Okay. We don't do that in my house. Everybody walk up and get their own, you know, and you walk up and you grab, you scoop out what you need and you go eat wherever you're going to eat. Yeah. So, but when I come and deal with you and your people, I'm going to, I'm going to abide by the guidelines that I'm surrounded by. Yeah. You, you have when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Exactly. I was just about to say that. So no, you're right. You're right, dog. It, it's to me, I knew it. I knew it hit home with you because of how, uh, how much you had in common with that, you know, with that, just that situation and P to be frank and to see that people were trying to negate that or take that kind of take that, that battle away from you. It kind of pissed me off. And the reason why like, I can't entertain the internet, the reason why the internet gets to me sometimes is that people, they just don't want to understand. They don't want to listen. They want to believe and they want to stick up for their ideas because that's what they believe in. They can't be wrong. And that's what I'm telling you. That's a dangerous person. A person that knows it all and a person that, that has no flaws is, is just dangerous to me because there's no acceptance of anything. You can't accept when you're wrong. You can't accept when somebody has done something wrong around you. You will completely go blind by the fact that this is what I believe and this is what I'm stand for. That is pure ignorance. Yeah, you'll be blind. You, people get blinded by their truths, ignoring exactly. facts. You you can't yeah. I, if <laughs> no matter what I believe, if the person that is being affected by this and I respect them because that's what it really boils down to is mm -hmm. do I do I respect you enough to take your opinion or take your point of view and respond accordingly to it? If I don't care if it's something as simple as me tapping my pen, if me tapping my pen is constantly annoying you to a point where you feel seriously ill about it and you tell me and if I don't stop, that means F you. I don't care. Like, yeah. I know that's a cheap, a cheap example, but I mean, we can go for days on it, but it just yeah, we, we see at, that all the time. At we what point that. do you listen to a group of people who are telling you the same thing? You know what I mean? Like, at what point do you, you, I don't care what you, what's it. You don't see me sitting here commenting on women. Mm -hmm. You don't see me sitting here commenting on the, uh, the LBGTQ, uh, community because yeah. it's not my stance. I don't have any ground to stand on other than we're human, other than I care about their general well being and their human rights. You know what I mean? But yeah. I'm not going to sit here and make an argument for something that has nothing to do with me. So if you got a group of Native Americans telling you, hey, don't go around calling people Pocahontas. It's not cool. Then just listen. Yeah, <laughs> like, don't, don't sit up there like, and say why just not. Just say, okay, my bad. Yeah. I didn't know. Or if you're going to ask why not, take the answer and and dwell on it. Like, oh, okay, I didn't know. Yeah. Don't listen don't me. come back. Don't fight. Like, well, I'm, I'm saying not. it because it's cool. I'm saying it because you, you know, because of your long, pretty hair. And, just, you know, it's like the cartoon. The cartoon was beautiful. Uh, it's not a not, bad word. It's a historical reference. That is I wouldn't different. Want, that's uh, right. That's totally different. If you looked at a girl and said, boy, you like you have the resemblance of a Pocahontas. That's almost a compliment because you're looking at her appearance. But if you're calling somebody a Pocahontas. Yep. It's a big like you, difference, and then you, he didn't use it in that turn in that in that. Uh, he didn't use it in a positive light. Period. Yeah, he didn't use it in that 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 you know that. that he could have called her. He, he could have called her a happy face. Like he 
water, anything. I was just about to say that too. He could have said anything else, but he said that. You know what and, I'm saying? And he only said that because of the setting he was in. Exactly. Now, eat that. Just eat that, dog. You messed up. You shouldn't have said it. That's it. Don't Dude. have people coming out trying to explain your. You know, what I'm saying? I just couldn't. I can I couldn't deal with it, man. Like to me, like I said, I seen you going out there. I seen you battling it out with these people that just. And then you had people that understand. Not everybody disagreed. Oh no. It was, it was a lot of people that was sitting there like, listen, I don't understand. And, and a lot of white people as well. Mm-hmm. Yo, it's a racial slur. The way he used it was in the derogatory matter. Period. What the fuck else do you need me to say to you? And that's where the frustration comes by, from me at least. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just seen you. I was reading all that stuff. And to me, it just never made, it never made sense from the get-go. Like, that's just something you eat. Like, if somebody says, yo... I don't like the way you did that. Okay, my bad, man. I'm sorry. That's it. Let's move on. What else do we? What else do we? What else do I need to do? So, yeah, man. I seen it, man. I just it's ignorance, man. It's just ignorance, <laughs> man. And and you know what, dude? And what's so funny is this actually rolls into another point that I wanted to bring up. Yeah. So so Kevin Sorbo, for those who don't know, the guy who played um who played Hercules, uh, the live action Hercules. He actually brought up a point that kind of fits with this. He asked a question. He said, if Donald Trump and he's at, before I um, let me give you the context. He's talking in terms of like uh, everything that went down with Hillary Clinton and her deleting her emails and all that other stuff. Right. But I'm going to look at this from an angle of us accepting him as president and his uh, his ability to be president and how well or bad he's doing. So just to give that pretense. So. This is what he asked. If Donald Trump deleted all of his emails, wiped his server, uh, and destroyed all of his phones with a hammer, would mainstream media suddenly lose all interest in the story and declare him innocent? Now, I know he's talking about something different, but that brings up a good point that actually gets crapped on by what just happened. Trump, if Trump got rid of all social media, all his past media wasn't a TV star, didn't have the history that he had, or at least the public history that he has. In my honest to God opinion, his actions would still cause us to have the outrage that we do with him. His actions in regards to what? In, in regards to any and everything. I mean, look at look at what happened with the um with the uh call talkers. Okay. Okay, so you're you're talking about let's say he got here we don't hear from him the way we're hearing from him now. We don't see him the way we see him now. Mm-hmm. But he still has done these actions yep. that we like. I mean, I'm talking about even before the election, the whole like I said, the the, the grabbing by the vagina line. He said mm-hmm. all of that stuff. I you I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, and I know a lot of people. A lot one argument that I always hear. Um, Oh well, he—that's just his social media. You're you're using his social media, or that was before he was president. Everybody, every other president was held to their past. Yep, and I still mean, to this day they should be. And that's what I'm saying. And and for somebody to be president, you truly are the face of the nation. You're you're supposed to represent the feel and presence of the nation at that point in time. So for for him to be standing and doing these type of things with no no remorse, because honest to God, jumping back to the whole um, the cold talker thing, if he would have simply got on Twitter and I don't know if he has or not, but if he would have simply got on Twitter and said, hey, guys, I didn't know that that was a, a term to use like a, a negative term. And, the, and I'm apologize the way I used it. If he would have said that he would have got so many brownie points from me because mm-hmm. that's yeah, cause- all it would have took. Yo, that that's all it. That's all that mattered. If you would have just said, "Yo, I messed up. I am sorry," that's it. There is no more argument. There really isn't nope. because he's accepted it. It's already been accepted. It's already, you know, let's just dust it underneath the wind. He did it. He claims he didn't know or whatever. Now you do have people that wouldn't let it go. I, what I'm saying is the people that the the people that like me, the people that can understand when somebody has like. Because if Donald Trump said some shit to me right now that made sense, I'm going to say, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with it. People like that that can, you know, that can split things apart and put two and two together. 
they make these type of situations easy because it's just oh it's cut and dry yo he apologized okay cool on to the next subject yep that's it but there are people out here that that will drag that thing on no matter what they won't accept apologies and that's not the way to go the way to go is for him to if in these situations if he comes out and does what he's supposed to do like still sticking with the code talkers thing apologize say i didn't mean it that way i'm sorry that's it it's over it's done he's accepted it so we can no longer talk about it in that way anymore other than yeah. something past tense like we can't because you acknowledge the mistake and you made the apology yes you can't take the words back mm-hmm. they were said we heard you say them in the manner you said them but now we can we can make progress with it and but, it wouldn't cause so much of this uproar it wouldn't be as big with that being said though with him as the pre- being the president mm-hmm. of the United States that would you say that something like that needs to be like that should be stuck to his resume or do you think there is like a statute of limited uh, limitation when it comes to presidents doing something wrong? Because, I mean, you look at Bill Clinton, he's going to ever forever have that joke about. Uh, uh, I never chick. had sexual relations with that wall. Yeah, man. that'll always be on his. So, I mean, even if he apologized for that, it's still something. OK, our president did do that. But our this is. But this is what's so bad about. And this this actually goes back to the whole Kevin Sorbo thing. This this is what's so bad about him, that this will get overshadowed because he's most likely and I'm not a betting man like I used to be, but I would put my money on him doing something crazier. Mm-hmm. So, oh, oh, hey, oh, no, no. Yeah, I, I, I think you're you, me and the whole world would probably bet against him on something like that because he, he hasn't proven no one wrong yet. Exactly. It, it steady grows. It, it I mean, it, it's going higher and higher. I'm waiting for something else to pop up. I swear he's like a walking hold my beer meme. <laughs> hold my beer. That that's you know that's a good reference, <laughs> dude. Every like oh man, Tr- Trump can't say nothing crazier than that. Trump hold my beer. Like it just. <laughs> Like he, it's almost like he's in the competition with himself to top himself. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh, I mean, did you see he wants to make a game show for the uh, the worst news source or the fakest news? Oh my gosh. And why? Uh, yeah, it, like the top five fakest news. Like this dude's Twitter page <laughs> you is relinquish that once you became the president. That's yeah, the wrong. Yep. You should have been. Don't see this is the thing, man. And people praise him for this, him for him being a, a outspoken, him showing that he's just human like the rest of us. I've been uh, knew that the president of the United States, whoever it was, was human just like us. The only difference is is they in the spotlight. They answer the big questions. We just, you know, we vote them into office, and that's pretty much that. I ain't sitting up here talking to Donald Trump on a daily basis. Hell, mm-hmm. I ain't talking. To- Barack Obama hell I was never I've never been in the same city when he was in the same in the city as well so I've never been that close to any president what I'm trying to say is that I think people are looking too much into that when you're the president of the United States or you hold a title of any sort you you're the face so you have to carry yourself in a way where it's it's like pure respect. Like mm-hmm. whether you hate him or not, you know, he's still the president. And I think if he wasn't the pretty much the person who he is, the way he acts now, I think people who didn't like the fact that he won would still have a lot of respect. There's people out here that don't even acknowledge him as yeah their president. You know what I'm saying? That's tough. Like when people don't even acknowledge you as their president, whether they hate you or not. Like Jesus. So what what. You need to. We need to separate that. Like, yes, we need to hold this guy at the standard that has been held, from my knowledge, the beginning of time, mm-hmm. is that you're the president of the United States. You have to say the right thing. You have to do the right thing. Don't be a human. You be the president of the United States. And so, and you're you're abs- You're 
you're. I didn't mean to cut you off. You're absolutely no, right. Go ahead, man. Go. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, I know that. Look, I like to. I like to look at it from both sides. We all know that there was a large portion of the United States um, where the people felt neglected. Mm-hmm. I can completely understand why there is a large portion of um, you had a large population of the working class who felt they were being um, who felt they were being neglected and being left out by their government. So when that's how in that's how Trump was able to make his rise. He was able to make his rise because he appealed to the to the everyday man, the everyday person. Um, and when I say everyday person, I'm talking more so the conservative everyday. Um, I mean, you've seen it, Midwest, Southern, the uh, the Green Belt. He appealed to all these people that a lot of the um, a lot of mainstream politicians have left out, yeah. and they're tired of the norm. Everybody's tired of people kicking. We're, we're tired of kicking the can down the. Uh, down the street for the next person to deal with and -hmm. people wanted something different the system started feeling stagnant and it started feeling like it wasn't making any positive moves so what did people do they naturally did what they felt right big change i mean on the democratic side you seen what was happening everybody was cheering and rooting for bernie every side wanted big change now clearly the side that won trump uh the republic or the conservative side which is not i i'm not (sighs) I'm not I'm not in bed with any specific group of anybody. Yeah. And I've um I heard this from Joe Madison. There's no um there's no permanent friends or enemies. There's only permanent um uh, uh interests. There's only permanent interests. That's the only thing that matters. So mm-hmm. if things that matter, if Trump's talked about and addressed everything that truly mattered to me in the way that I see is best. He would have had my vote, plain and simple. Yeah. Honestly, he might have got my vote if he would have just brought all of his products and had them made in America. Anything with the Trump name on it, if he had it made in America, because you know why? He would have been the first, one of the few presidents who did what they said they were going to do immediately. Yeah, exactly. No, that that makes sense, bro. I, and I, and and this is coming from somebody who who's voted Republican the few times that I could. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the end of the day, I vote Repu- I vote uh, Democratic because a lot of the things that they vote on and the way they vote are in ways that I agree with. Yeah. So one thing that I've also seen and flip into the other side, I've noticed a large amount of people who vote against their own self interest. So, and yeah, what- but but that's exactly what I was what I'm saying is that these people overlook the wrong. Mm. Hell, they'll overlook the right. Yeah. Just to vote for you I, I was telling this this dude this one time that a lot of people like are born a certain way. They're born and raised a certain way. Mm-hmm. And this is just what I believe. Mm-hmm. I, I use I was the example I was using when I was talking to this guy was racism. I said, think about it. Um you got a little boy going to school and he says this, right? He says, I don't like black people. All right, let's just keep it straight to the point. Mm-hmm. He says something like that. He got that from somewhere, in my opinion. I think that this stuff is the way some people are being raised. Because a lot of people are re- just like religion, man. You can use any one of these things. Mm-hmm. You were born and raised a certain way because this is what you were taught by mom and dad or whoever. So now that this is the way you were raised, this is the right way no matter what. Yep. You could be handicapped. You could be sick. You could have this. You could have that. I mean, didn't Tommy Lauren say at one point she was using Obamacare? Not at one point. She is. Or she was. she's on Obamacare? So to bash it i'm just saying just that's yeah. just in that's just mm-hmm. one example yep like come on man we gotta really you're not you're not even breaking it down you're not thinking you're just voting because or you're just going with this side because this is my side you're not looking at the the truth you're not looking at the information given to you you're just saying this is the way to go because this is the way i've always been going this is the way i've been raised to go so i'm just going to continue doing that you know it's a win and loss thing for them 
and it's not a win loss thing for me. It's a right and wrong thing. Yep. Because if someone says like people telling me, oh, like I'm telling you, like it's just people I talk to sometimes. It's just it gets irritating because they'll say, oh yeah, the Republicans won. All right, but did you win? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you, well, you know. Do you know what's a? There's a fact out there that a lot of people don't know that. I want to say a majority of the poorest counties in the country and mm-hmm. count, you know, like San Bernardino County or County, whatever, whatever. Yeah. So the poorest counties in the country are Republican counties. Like it's, it, it, it's crazy to me. Like I sit there and I'm, I'm, but yet they vote Republican religiously, just like a lot of pe- a lot of people I know religiously voted democratic. Now I'm going to tell you this. I haven't there's not a Democrat that I voted for that didn't have a lot of the opinions and the positions that I had. So it wasn't like I was voting against my own Mm self-interest. You know what I mean? Uh, That's that's a you. But the difference between you and everyone else in that regards is that you're actually looking into both sides. You're not looking into one side. You're not just saying, oh, I'm going to go. You know where I'm going. Like you're you're reading up. You're, You're doing the research. You're in it. You know what I'm saying? So that's the difference. The difference is you can do the research. The difference with, with them is that they don't care to look at nothing. They just know Republicans is the way because the Republicans is the right way. Yep. Get the hell out of here with that. I mean, like, come no. on, even the name, the Grand Old Party. Really? It's just oh, and what I'm Oh, go ahead. And don't get me started on the whole, well, you know, the Republicans were the ones that freed the slaves. Yeah, those Republicans would be today's Democrats. So but, stop it. Like, yeah, and people yeah. don't, people disregard but, that point. You know what? You know why that point is invalid? To me, at least. Mm. Is because I don't give a shit who freed the slaves. You could have been. You could have been anything as long as they were freed. Yep. So that's that's this, a better point. You know, this goes into that the, the whole LeVar Ball thing. Now, I know this wasn't one of our topics, right? Mm-hmm. But um, obviously, we know LeVar's bun uh, son. I forget. I think his name is LaMelo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the one that went to uh, that. I, I, I think I it was LeAngelo. LeAngelo. Le- yeah, I think that is correct. Him and two other UCLA players got uh, arrested in China for stealing, whatever, blah, 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 right? So, story goes on that, and this is just based off of what we've seen in the news and the media. Uh, Trump made some type of, got some type of interaction with China's head leader or whatever, and the problem was fixed. Now, boom. When I heard that, I was like, oh, that's dope. Right, good shit, Trump. These kids, first of all, they kids. First of all, they're, they're kids. They they get to be home with their families. They're not doing 10 years in jail. In another country. Know, in another country that they're not fond of. They don't know the language. Boom. I That was just so, like, I was cool with that. But then you go to see his, his tweets calling them knuckleheads, uh, telling him and LeVar getting into it. About and at first I was like, you know what? I think he, I mean I think he is deserving of a of an of, you know of a thank you or some shit like that. The kids told him thank you, exactly. Right? But he's looking for people to bow down. That's what yeah. it looks like to me. He's looking for the extreme. I, I I did something good. You're gonna tell me that I did something good. Listen, if you're gonna do something, especially as the president of the United States, just do it. Don't yeah. do it with no type of recognition. You don't need to be told thank you because you did it because it's you're your president duty. of the United States and that's your duty to take care of your people. You you know how much brownie points like like we're talking about giving him brownie points. Yeah. Imagine if he would have did it and not tweeted shit. Oh dude, he would have been shit. a legend in the hood. Mm, <laughs> just, he just didn't just imagine that. You did that. Like you made the call to the, the Chinese representative and got them boys out of there and them boys was back home immediately and you just didn't say nothing. You didn't put out a tweet. You didn't do nothing. It was just that. And then, the, and then imagine if it was the kids that came out first and was like, yo, thank you to the president. He hooked us up. He did this. He took care of us. He, like, it would have been people like, whoa, he did that for y'all? Oh, man. He would have got brownie saying? points. They might have made. That might have made a shoe after him. Man, the Trump like, ones. 
you gotta <laughs> the Trump. <laughs> you gotta think about these things. Like I, I don't know why people make it seem like it. It has to be like, oh yeah, he's yes. I felt in the beginning. Yeah, hell yeah, I would have been thanking him too. Shit, he got you. Either way, if I was the one in jail or I had a son in jail and you made that call to get my son out of a different country that he's not used to, oh, yes, thank you. But the route and the extent that you took to get that thank you, to get that recognition for doing a good deed like that was extra. It was too excessive for me. So that's why I said to myself, yo, I, I kind of see why LeVar is going to joke about that. I would too. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell him thank you for another damn thing because – Yo, come on, man. Like, I, yo, my son's already thanked you. What more do you want? I don't, I'm not obligated to do anything for you. Yes, you hooked my son up. You got him out. But that's that's his, that's where it ends, especially if I'm not fond of you. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Like, you're pushing your button. You, you're going too far. Yeah. So that's my, that's my whole spiel on it, man. I, I just think that Donald Trump, he had plenty of opportunities to attempt to bridge the gap, and he's botched. Every single one of those. Ev- even okay, even going back to the and this is the last time I'm gonna do it. Going back to the Pocahontas, uh, Pocahontas thing. Mm-hmm. He, if he wouldn't have did that, and he wasn't in front of Andrew Jackson, it would have been a perfect day. Yeah. Oh, it would have been amazing. It would have been perfect. It would have been. It would have been perfect. But you made two major mistakes, and now social media is on fire about it. You know, I'm telling you, man. I I think him. I think the people that's around him, representing him, are they're not doing it right. Like there, 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 there is. See, there. When I say that there is no attempt to bridge the gap, there is no conversation. There is no dialogue between because there some people don't want to have it, and I'm talking about either from each side. Some people from the. I mean, we could just use it as a as a political thing. The left side, and I, when I say left side, I mean everybody, supporters of the left and even polit- politicians inside the left don't want to have that conversation with him because it's like p- almost pure hatred. You see what I'm saying? And then even on the right side, they just don't want to do it. Like, all I'm saying is if you guys put him in the position to attempt you know, just to attempt to speak to someone to, yo, let me see it from your perspective. You already won. You have the seat. You know what I'm saying? Like the seat is yours. No one's going to argue that with you because you got it. I can't take it away from you. You know what I'm saying? Let's just try to bridge the gap. Let's see where the problems is and what the concerns are and how we can come to a medium on it. But that shit is not, it's pride. Pride yeah, in the fact that you... He just don't give a shit, in my and, opinion. And I'm, no, and his actions and the actions of the people around him prove that you don't care. The yeah. fact that nobody nobody took the time to tell you, hey, man, maybe we shouldn't do this event in front of Andrew Jackson. Yeah, that's what that, man. Like, the fact that nobody in there, first off, that means that nobody knows their history mm-hmm. in there, or at least knows, yeah, period. Or, or that shit is. Or, or they don't care. Not, they're not or that or they're not preparing properly yep y'all only, set, yeah y'all set it up if y'all set it up y'all got your secret services there y'all got the well, whoever else is there that's mediating and all of that you guys are there why wouldn't somebody be able to spot that like oh shit in the frame is andrew jackson shit we got people of native native americans coming here why the hell that's not the right decor yeah thank you Come simple on. as that Simple as that. So, so and, I mean, that's my point on it, man. And and you know what? And this is actually kind of jumping away from politics a little bit, and more yeah. so into into finding low key turning red over here. No, nah, I got you. So, <laughs> Black Friday was this past uh, was this past Friday, this past weekend. Uh-oh. Black Friday okay. and you know Cyber Monday and all that other fun stuff. Yeah. Now, okay, so not only was it just a crazy sale day for general stuff. It was also a major sale on guns. And mm-hmm. every um every year as a recent, there's been a major increase in gun sales um, on Black Friday. So um, the NPR group, they reported that there was um, two um, there was an estimated two hundred and three thousand 
guns sold because that's how many uh, gun purchase background checks there were. Now, for people who have never purchased a gun, you got to um, you got to fill out your proper paperwork and you get a cooling period, at least in California. You do You get a cooling period and they um, and they run your paperwork and blah, 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 blah. So basically, they got all these firearm checks that went through and they estimated because usually when that gun background check happens, it's safe to say that somebody was buying a gun. 203,000 guns. Now, personally, you I thought that number would have dropped. Um, and that's me being naive because I do know that whenever there's fear and whenever a rise of, uh, of fear... I guess whenever fear mongering starts happening, that people tend to arm themselves or prep. I mean, look, over the past 10 years, what did you start seeing? You started seeing TV shows for doomsday preppers. Mm -hmm. You started seeing um, all these things started coming about that all deal with the, well, what do we do after? What do we do after, you know, the major event? I'm a little lost, though. You said you would have thought the the number of gun sales would have dropped. And that's, yeah, that's just the naive me being naive thinking uh-huh. like oh hey everybody's talking about gun ban this gun ban that but now that i think about it being reasonable and rational whenever you start trying to ban something people tend to buy more of it and this Bitcoin. is yeah and i mean we can roll that over to liquor drugs Anything, blah blah blah, yeah. blah blah if i tell you hey there ain't gonna be no more playstations people are gonna go buy multiples you're right <laughs> It, it's yeah, just absolutely. it's just the way people work. So it just it just tripped me out that not only did Black Friday have that, but it was just an increase of gun sales. But also when it came to Black Friday, they're not even they're trying to stray away from calling it Black Friday and calling it Black November. Because there was actually a big boost in sales from November 1st through the 22nd, where there was 30 billion dollars worth of sales uh, online yeah. sales. Oh, online. Oh, just online. Whoa, thirty point four billion, and that was that was before Black Friday. How do you feel about that? Because I don't know how to take it. That a it, whole month of Black Friday. That it actually bothers me because people will get lost in the sauce. Because mm-hmm. I, I worked in retail, I've seen it. All yeah. of a sudden, everything's twenty five percent off when it really was just the buy one get one half off sale. Pretty much, and but. It sounds better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like me telling you everything's twenty five percent off. Sound uh, sounds better than buy one get one half off. It's just to buy shit in bulk because they they even had sales of buy one get one free. So it's like oh, I'm about to buy seven. Can yeah, I get another seven for free. Yeah, it, it I just it, some people are just gonna waste that stuff anyway. Exactly, and it just once again, you know me, and I've harped on it in multiple episodes that we vote with our dollar. So yep. by us going crazy, and, oh, and and also before I forget, did you see how um, stores started opening up on Thanksgiving again? Remember yeah. how it was like, no, we're not doing it. It's a day I for know. the families. Stores mm-hmm. actually opened earlier. Man, I, I want to say GameStop opened at four. Man, it was a gang of stores open on Thanksgiving. Yeah, and I remember, I remember, remember we worked, we worked retail together. Yes, we did. The dude, the dude said <laughs> when we when we. It was the Thanksgiving. They were like, "Oh, are we open now?" Because because Walmart's closing too. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like competition. If yeah. they close, okay, we'll close. We're closing. So if they open, we go open too. Yep. So yeah, to me, I guess this is me just just looking from the outside looking in. I I'm not. I don't like that. I'm I'm not gonna like that because now it's it's literally a whole month of just spending money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But but let's play devil's advocate. Okay, this is from a business standpoint. It is the greatest thing on earth, in my opinion, because now you're selling. Now you got mm-hmm. a whole month. Now it's, it ain't just chalked up to a weekend because a lot of people are indecisive. Some people say, "Hmm, do I really need it?" Hmm, now you got a whole month to convince this person to come buy whatever they was thinking to buy. Buy two TVs, buy three. Mm-hmm. Oh, let me buy an extra TV. Let me buy a TV for my dog. Let me let me do this. Let me do that. You got a whole month to trick people to just continue purchasing shit that they're probably never going to use or they're barely going to use. Like I I just was having this conversation about like yo, think about it. 
for a working man, person that works 40 hours a week, count drive time. Drive time may be an hour average, 30 minutes there, 30 back. Um, brush your teeth, wash it, take a bath, get in the shower, you know, do your chores, eat. What fucking time do you have to watch TV? What time do you have to do anything? Man, I'm shocked <laughs> that we have the time to do what we do. But this also goes back to what I say as well, kind of contradicting itself. If you truly enjoy it, you'll, you'll do find it. Time. You know, you'll make time. But I just don't get it. Like, I, with TVs and, sh- and shit like that now, just sticking with this topic, is a waste of money because you're not sitting in front of You don't truly get to enjoy it. Like, I don't turn my living room TV on. We don't mm-hmm. watch that damn TV. That's like a special occasion deal. You see what I'm saying? So now people are buying stuff that they're just not going to use. And that's, that's going to be a whole month. As From a business standpoint, jeans. But, you know... Like you said, like what you said, that whole sauce thing, I, I refuse to get lost in the sauce. Yeah, man. I'm like, you're not, I'm not going to fall for the okie doke. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just sucks to see so many people go down that route. Now, I'm not above people living their life and having fun. That's, that's not what I'm, that's not what I'm saying. As long yeah. as you plan for it. But most people do not plan for Black Friday. Hell no. They, they know. Just- don't, oh God! Don't don't make it be like well, I forget if that was last year. It was one of them years where uh, it was a five a five pay period month in November. Mm. Oh, my, oh my! God! A whole check for Black Friday. Yep. I got a whole. Uh, okay. <laughs> so yep. yeah, man. People are you know people see these deals and you know I, I, to be uh, get on my conspiracy theory. I'm. These could be the original prices for yeah. these devices that you purchase. So, I mean, for me, man, I don't. I look at Black Friday like another day. To be honest, I don't look at it any other special. I, I, I'm not going to say I don't go out and purchase anything because obviously we went out and made a couple um, purchases based for the podcast and mm-hmm. what we have going on. But that's it. Like, yep. if I wasn't planning on buying it, I ain't buying it. Like, I'm just not. And that was, I mean, I got a new monitor and whatnot, but that's, that was the whole point. I knew what I was going for and I got in and I got out. I know plenty of people who didn't even know they wanted something until they seen the sale of it. And or you ever seen them people that walk in and they just don't know where to go, <laughs> man. Those are the ones, those are the ones that black Friday is truly profiting off of. It's not profiting off of the ones who are going for the specific items. Nope. It's the ones who just walk in and want to be there and see something cool that catches their eye. Exactly. So um, why yeah. else would they put their elect- like when you go to Walmart? I'm sorry to cut you off. When no, they go to know. when you go to Walmart during Black Friday, at least at the Walmarts in my area, they had the electronics in the refrigerator section. Like if you wanted to go buy <laughs> video games, the video games were all the way in the corner uh, by the milk. Mm hmm. Like so now you, you walk in there just to get some milk and then you oh damn that's Marvel vs. Capcom three. Oh man. Yep. I'm gonna just get it too. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's this is big foolery, man. Yeah, I mean that kind of leads into another topic I had just brought up to you too. Uh but this is more of being the same thing. I feel like Black Friday's a cheat. Um but uh once again Destiny, uh hey. Bungie has um has really dropped the ball and I, I think Destiny's on the verge of death. Mm. Like, the reason why I say that is because Bungie just a uh, they, they they it was a delay on their uh, their third stream, and it was a um, a delay on their third stream about uh for the Curse of a Size uh, DLC that's supposed to be coming out December fifth. Now the problem that arose is that. Um, a Reddit user, I, for, I don't know his name, uh, exposed pretty much Bungie for cheating players out of experience gain to get more bright Ingrams. Now, let me explain. So in the, in, Bun, in Destiny, once you reach level 20, 20 is the level cap. After level 20, you can still progress a bar. Once that bar, um, once that bar gets maxed out, it gives you a, a bright Ingram. Bright Ingrams are, they are the prize for the the microtransaction, which is in Destiny. Now, Destiny, if you wanted to buy Bright Ingrams, you would pay money for 
uh, silver, and then you would use the silver to purchase Bright Ingrams. And this so, is real money. Yeah, that's real cash, your dollar, credit cards, things like that. Now, Bungie gave, you know, they gave us the option to earn the stuff on our own. And for diehard players, this isn't even an issue because diehard players going to grind and they're going to play. But for the casual player, this is, I'm going to tell you why this is the, there is a huge problem in there. So say I'm looking to get the outfit from the Bright Ingrams, right? Say I got a hunter, say I want to get the outfit. Now, granted, you've had the opportunity to get the full set by now. Uh, they've been giving you everything, and uh, everything has been given to us pretty much as of right now. Uh, there may be a couple shaders, but I know ships, exotic ships, exotic emotes, all of that stuff has been given away. All you have to do is purchase it. Uh, I think it's for their Bright Dust, and Bright Dust is the, the byproduct of these Ingrams. So that's what you use to purchase that stuff. It's real easy to gather. Well, this Reddit user found out that after a certain amount of time of doing certain activities in, in Destiny, Destiny 2, um, your experience gained towards receiving those Bright Engrams were cut. Now, even if it was cut, a half, cut in half, I, I we just had this con- we were having this conversation off air, and I at first I said I understood it. Now I'm telling you I do not understand it, and I don't agree with it because people who are grinding this game for specific emotes and shaders and whatever these are just small things. But don't take that option away from anybody. If you're gonna put it in the game for me to be able to earn it, let me do it. If I'm gonna put the time into your game that I purchased to grind these whatever this public events, strikes, whatever, don't hinder my reward for a no cost item. Exactly. So, um, no, you you just you literally just didn't even give me. You just took it away from me. You took the option away from me, and there was no like, no like. It will if it was like okay, we're gonna cut your experience, but you get like one third more of the reward. You get an extra reward. That is a that is like that's a give and take situation. Sure. True. You completely just took away the grind, like. Now, I can understand why casual players will be like, you know, and I ain't playing this no more. You know, like I said, the 1% of people that play Destiny, this is not going to affect them at all. So if that's the case, why even why even take it out the game or why even put it in the game to begin with? You should just leave it exactly how it is. And let me tell you why. And this is why no matter how beautiful the game is, no matter how perfect the game is, if there is any form of microtransaction, you have to say it's a safe assumption that there's going to be a way f- to push you to even debate using real money. Yeah. Put it th- for me. I was a one percenter. I was a hardcore. Uh, I was not a casual player when it came to destiny. I put mad hours in and I still don't have a um, I still don't have an exotic emote. No, you don't. No. Wow. I have an exotic ship. I don't even have an exotic uh, uh, sparrow. sparrow. Wow. Do you get what I'm saying? And you know how much I played. Yeah, I don't know. I got them all. <laughs> no, but but, that, and, but and luck luck plays a factor in it. Too. Oh heck yeah! I watched RNG, you. RNG. Yeah. RNG is is obviously it's the random number generator which mm-hmm. is in the game. So luck has its factor in it as well. I mean, think about Destiny One. I went the whole first, I mean, what we would call seasons now, I went the whole first first season without getting a Praetorian foil. And then once the Dark Below came out, that's when I got the, the Praetorian foil. So I had to get it after the fact. And then I had all the gear, everything else, but I played the raid so many times and I still didn't get that damn Praetorian foil. I was dedicated to get it and I finally got it. So RNG plays a factor. Now, I get what you're saying about that, and you know what I'm. What I say is, especially if you're going to break it up into seasons like this, where you're forcing people to, okay, I'm never going to have a chance at this again. Let me grind for it. You just took the grind away from me, pretty much. You know, that's an extra two, three, you know, uh, bright Ingrams a which, day, it, which is, Lord knows how many hours, depending on how the player plays. 
Yeah. So and I'm and I know for me, I'm a person that maximize experience. I'm talking about maximize experience like heroic um, events, heroic events, public events. Uh, like if I have a like back when there was when there was uh, bounties and stuff, I would do bounties that co- I would do missions that coincide with all my bounties just to finish them. Then when I finished them, I, I, I got experience all over the place with this game. You literally just well with this situation, you literally just strip that away from your casual player, and that to me, I don't agree with that because it, it shows dishonesty there, and it shows your you, and it this goes back. We had an episode where we talked about microtransactions, and what did we say? We said my uh, Activision had purchased a program mm. that was supposed to you know, put people without certain gear against people with the gear so they can see that this person has the gear and make them want to go get the gear. Now, you see and you can understand where the problem can go with with that as well. Now you're you're forcing me to want to say, I mean, I'm about to drop $10. It's just $10. You know? No, that's wrong. And, And let me tell you this. If there were actual weapons up for sale in Destiny... I would truly believe that that's really the process because look at the way trials of um, uh, trials of the nine works, mm-hmm. dude. I mm-hmm. don't know how many times I got put up against a sweaty team. You're telling me the system you have in place can't recognize that. Hey, these dudes don't win that often. Yeah. Why would you put me up against yeah, well, sweaty players on their way to get a, a perfect card? You know what? These people and well, sweaty they, players actually are people. It was worse than Destiny 1 because in Destiny 1, you stayed around your mark. So if you're at 7 8 wins, you're paying a 7 8 team. In Destiny 2, it got a little better, right? I haven't played Trials that much. I'm more of just on the information scale and what I've seen other people play and get. Now, with, with Trials of Osiris, though, um, with those skill based matchmaking and, and stuff like that, it's kind of give and take with that because that's, first of all, that's in game content. Right, that's considered in-game content. True. That's also be that's also content that can get you to your max light level. That's what you would use to get maxed out. True. So, um, I think they have pulled away the difficulty in Destiny so much that I'm I'm falling away from it because the raid ain't hard. Trials of Osiris. If I really took it serious, I. I've been to the lighthouse a couple of times right now. I haven't gone to the lighthouse one time because I just don't care about destiny that much. Cause and the, I, I'm a hardcore. I played every end game content. I beat every boss at least, at least five times. I was there doing the glitch, knocking Atheon off. I was doing it for people. I was doing the ethernet glitch when I would pull my ethernet, hop back in the room to get the reward. I did all of that stuff. And now I'm just truly devastated that Destiny has taken a turn that it's taken now, and I don't want to play it anymore, and I won't go back. I mean, I'll jump back and forth occasionally. I turned it on, sat in the tower today, and didn't do a damn thing. That's turned depressing. the shit off and put Call of Duty in. Let it's me, just crazy. Let me, let me tell you this. A simple fix for me for Destiny would be if they just brought over every weapon from Destiny 1. Mm, no you don't want to do that <laughs> no 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 let me tell you why because it'll divvy up the playing field it'll because t- people are going to gravitate to their favorites i'm gonna tell like you i'm gonna use my bad juju yeah but i'm gonna I'm tell you why that wouldn't work with the system that they have now which i don't like no the let me let me stop you let me stop you and bring back the rng for weapons i need i need random rolls for weapons okay RNG for weapons is cool. Like if they brought that back, I wouldn't. I wouldn't you'd be playing it. Because, oh, because you'd want your god roll. You'd no, be playing no, a, it. Let me let me tell you something. One thing I've learned about every shooting game: if I shoot it, I can kill you with it. You see what I'm saying? True. With guns, and most of the time, it's you know what the powerful gun is because you're gonna see your favorite YouTuber using it, your favorite Twitch streamer using sure. it. So once it's like, oh, the IS Luna is the best hand cannon, I'm going to get the IS Luna. Once I get the IS Luna, everything else is irrelevant. And the reason, this is why Destiny was so cool when it came to like their gun variants is because there was there was always a meta for a certain period of time. When the mm-hmm. game first came out, it was assault rifles. 
After that, it was hand cannons. The thorn reigned supreme mm-hmm. in the crucible. Mm-hmm. After that, it was uh, scout rifles. And then after that, that towards the end, it was post rifles. And they did everything in their possibility, everything they possibly, they possibly could have to try to get everything on the even playing field, and it never worked because there was always something that, that just had... I'm, Put it like this: They came out with a gun, the fastest firing post rifle in the game, right? One of the one of the fastest firing, called the Grasp of Mallet, and they fu- they messed around and put that as the Nightfall. So you know what people was doing? People was killing the boss in a certain area, dying and doing it all over again and getting the drops. I remember getting like thirty five of those post rifles, just back to back to back, just trying to get the perfect one for me. And I still didn't get the one I wanted. I wanted a counterbalance, perfect balance, um, and it could have been anything else on there. But I wanted counterbalance and perfect balance, and I still didn't get it. And it, I mean, I could have used the gun regardless any way I got it. But that's just the specific one I wanted. So. If they brought back, if they bring back random roles, I think it, uh, it the longevity in the game will be extended. Oh, it would add That's, so much life to it. Yeah, but I just don't think with the way everything is set up now, with the 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 way the guns are set up. I watched the I watched a guy do a video on the guns and how they're set up with the kinetic, the energy, and the power. Think about it. Um, when was the last time you used a sniper rifle in Destiny Two? Never. Okay then. That gun that type is irrelevant. Excuse me. That type is irrelevant. If you no, come into the crucible and you don't have no sword or no shotgun, you are or no or rocket launcher, you're but, pissing me off. But there's people that can use sniper rifles and True. that are beast with sniper rifles. But the how many do you know? In your party. I personally know I'm none of them. Thank you. Of course, there's always going to be a sniper. They're always <laughs> going to be out there, but I I know none. <laughs> I don't know none because I'm see it, sniping don't work for me because I'm in your face, and that's how everybody I play with. They're, we're rushing. I don't play the long range game. So th- to this, this is just the concern with me. The concern is that I mean, not even going back on that with with Destiny. I think they're they they're on the verge of death. They're on the verge of nobody playing your game. They're on the verge of division. Ooh. So Ooh. I'm gonna just leave it at that because uh, I'm very disappointed so far for the first season. Um, so far for the second season, I'm looking. The only thing I'm interested in is Os- Osiris and the storyline. That's it. I'm not interested in nothing else. I'm not interested in grinding. I'm not interested in their new fucking. Uh, copy over or not even copy over new activity in the raid so yeah that that's 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 all I'm looking forward to I'm not I'm not looking forward to nothing else in destiny 2 matter of fact I'm looking forward to god of war Ooh. that's what I'm looking for god Ooh. of war so since we touching on games that we're looking forward to um and I'm I'm going to end it with this um I'm looking forward to the last of us 2 um, I didn't play the last of us for the first one. Bro, it was a beautiful game, dude. Yeah. It, it's hands down, it's worth playing like tonight. You won't finish it tonight, but it's worth playing. It's a beautiful story, dude. And it, it makes you question humanity. Really? Yeah. The last of us on two. some like Walking Dead at its best. Oh really? Yeah. You know what? I mean that may be my next uh playthrough or let's play. Um I do have a YouTube channel. Check me out at XT Jones. Um, I'll be streaming as well. But I, Twitch. I am def- I, on on Twitch, I do stream on Twitch. Same uh, same name. Uh, but I do think that I'm going to see. I'm learning from you, man. I'm throwing the plugs out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but I, I think uh, I may do Last of Us. I, I want to go back and play all the Uncharted. Ooh, tell me. Go back and play I'm not even gonna track. dive into how dope Nathan Drake's life is. Nathan Drake is awesome, dog. He's awesome because he's always in the shit. Yeah, it's like, and then I just love watching his situation just go from bad to a thousand times worse. Yeah, it, it, it's the, like watching Mission Impossible, and it's like playing Mission Impossible. That's how. That's pretty, how it feels. Pretty much, it's always. Some, I'm telling you, I forget the one I played. I think it was the third one where. 
he get into you get into a plane crash and he's in the middle of the desert. Yes, he, he literally is just walking. He's hallucinating, and then he runs upon some enemies and he just gets into this gunfight. You're just whooping ass, man. That that was one of my one of my favorite games. But. I, I loved. I truly loved it. It reminds me of like Tom Cruise. Anytime you see Tom Cruise running in a movie, it's safe to say it's a good movie. <laughs> if he's running, I I haven't seen a movie where Tom Cruise is running where I didn't like it. Mm hmm. You know, so it's just like Nathan Drake. You, as soon as he pops up on the game, you know it's about to go down. It's about to go down. <laughs> hey, well, and um, since we're plugging, um, you can follow me on everything at Baron J67. Um, I stream on Twitch. I also have a YouTube page, Baron J67, Discord, uh, Baron J67, all that other good stuff. So we can all, you know, and make sure, folks. Make sure to subscribe. Um, you know, we really appreciate you listening to the video, but also click that subscribe button that's below. It helps us out. And then comment. It really mm-hmm. lets us know and let us know what we can do better. And because uh, we do always strive to do better. And also just to continue the conversation. Exactly. Yeah. Because uh, just as much. I mean, we're we're everyday people just like you would consider yourselves. And everything that we do talk about is things that we either experience or that we see. So if you have something that you want us to talk about, man, just leave it in that comment section. We'll get to it and we'll definitely uh, talk it over amongst ourselves to put it down as a topic. And, and we'll discuss it because we have a lot to say about a lot of stuff, you know, and, and this is this is episode nine. We're just not even close to hitting the tip of the icebergs so. all right yeah. so i'm baron j67 i'm t jones man and we're out peace palm trees and good weed nigga southern california rib nigga narrow turns don't attend the mirror race me snatch your v6 nigga you don't want to beat your beast nigga this your fucking trick to disappear came back out my cave like easter cops are real i keep